Here in the United States, the mudslinging between the Romney and Obama campaigns is reaching new levels today with the campaigns engaged in all-out verbal warfare. CNN's national political correspondent Jim Acosta is here in the Situation Room. He's got details, and it's getting nasty by the minute. Nastier by the minute, I should say. Wolf, it is getting rough out there, and as uh, we uh, said all day long today, Mitt Romney has been warning the Obama campaign that he would respond to the attacks he's been receiving from the president and his surrogates over the last several days. Today, he and his campaign did just that. In Mitt Romney's first public rally since he says the Obama campaign accused him of committing a crime, the GOP contender blamed the war of words on the president. So the president's looking around for someone to blame. And uh, recently I became uh, the reason for uh, all our problems here. I was a surprise to my family and me, but he's always looking for someone out there. Romney says there's a reason for the attacks on his tenure at his former private investment firm, Bain Capital. I'm convinced he wants Americans to, be, Americans to be ashamed of success. Not so, says the Obama campaign. At a fundraiser in San Antonio, the president said it's Romney who made his business career fair game. His main calling card for wanting to be president is his private sector experience. Tax havens. Off. His campaign is stepping up the attacks, releasing a new ad that asks what Romney is hiding by refusing to release more than two years of tax returns. Romney told the National Review Online, I'm simply not enthusiastic about giving them hundreds or thousands of more pages to pick through, distort and lie about. They are clearly and unequivocally a bunch of liars. Punching back, the Romney campaign held a conference call with reporters featuring its brass knuckle surrogate John Sununu, who questioned the president's understanding of the economy in a personal way. It is the American way, and I wish this president would learn how to be an American. Minutes later, Sununu corrected himself. The president has to learn the American formula for creating business. Thank you. But an Ohio businessman on the same call also let loose. It seems to me that the Obama's America, there's no risk, but there's plenty of reward. That's called socialism to me. The personal attacks come one day after Romney said he would hit back at the president after what was said on an Obama campaign conference call last week. Either Mitt Romney, through his own words and his own signature, was misrepresenting his position at Bain to the SEC, which is a felony, or he was misrepresenting his position at Bain to the American people. As for the Romney conference call, an Obama campaign spokesman said it's the GOP contenders team that has officially gone off the deep end. All week there's been speculation Romney might change the subject by naming his running mate. His campaign announced two new staffers for the eventual VP pick. Uh, Romney heads to Ohio tomorrow, the home state of the man said to be at the top of the list, Rob Portman. But hold on to your hats, Bobby Jindal also scheduled to be in the same state of Ohio tomorrow. All we'll, right, we'll see if there's an announcement or not. We'll, you know. we'll see. If it's not tomorrow, it'll be one of these days. Got to be one or the other. Jim Acosta, right. thanks very much. And as Jim just reported, Romney National Campaign Co-Chairman John Sununu is getting blasted by Democrats for what they see as some over-the-line remarks today. John Sununu, uh, the former governor of New Hampshire, is joining us on the phone now from Manchester. Governor, thanks very much for coming in. Uh, and I, wa I want to give you a full chance to respond to what you said today, because as sure. you know, it's causing a huge uproar. Here's the full context of what you said on that conference call with the reporters. The president clearly demonstrated that he has absolutely no idea how the American econ economy functions. The men and women all over America who, who have worked hard to build these businesses, their businesses, from the ground up, uh, is how our economy became the envy of the world. It is the American way. And I wish this president would learn how to be an American. I, I wish this president would learn how to be an American. Governor, go ahead and explain what you really sure. meant to say. Well, I said three. Uh, first of all, I was responding to the president's really uh, terrible remarks in Virginia over the weekend, uh, where he told the business people of America they shouldn't take credit for building their businesses. Uh, that clearly is insulting to them. And, and in my opinion, expresses a lack of understanding of how jobs are created. I was making the point that in America, entrepreneurs deserve credit, and there's an American formula for creating jobs. And I used that phrase three or four times 
uh, in that call. And, and I wanted to come back to that same theme and that riff that you just made there. And instead of saying that he's got to learn the American formula uh, for creating jobs, I, I did say those words that are there. And, and frankly, I made a mistake. Uh, I shouldn't have used those words. And uh, I apologize for using those words, but I don't apologize for the idea that this president has demonstrated that he does not understand how jobs are created in America. He thinks that jobs are created by giving grants to your cronies, uh, to your bundlers and your contributors, like he did with Solyndra, like he did with Sixta, like he did with the wind projects that took jobs out of this country. Uh, the common denominator is that they all had uh, owners and investors that were bundlers and contributors to his campaign. That's what he means, perhaps, when he says government creates jobs. American taxpayer dollars go into cronies. So when you when you say you apologize, are you apologizing directly to the president? Yeah, I'm apologizing for using those words. I shouldn't have used them. All right, because later uh, in the day uh, on Fox News, and I'll put it up on the screen, you also went on and said this. You said President Obama has no idea how the American system functions, and we shouldn't be surprised about that because he spent his early years in Hawaii smoking something, spent the next set of years in Indonesia. I mean, a yeah. lot of people will hear that and think that's pretty outrageous as well, Governor. Well, Wolf, look, the president has to stop denigrating American values. He makes success... Uh, a terrible trait. He's sending a wrong message to the young people of America that if you get rich, you're somehow evil. Those are the issues that are really critical. And, and the American dream and the in, inspiration for the American dream comes from participating. And, and the president, whether he likes to admit it or not, never really held a private sector job in which he earned a real paycheck. And, and it's a lack of understanding what entrepreneurs do that is creating bad policy out of the White House. And if we don't talk about the fact that he doesn't understand what entrepreneurs do, then we will never understand why he failed to create a single job while he was president. Well, in the, in the, I guess in the past couple of years, what, about 4 million uh, jobs have been created? Yeah, uh, now he's only 500,000 short total. And frankly, he's bragging about creating 80,000 last month. When, when to keep up with population growth, you have to have 180 to 200,000. But you remember, uh, he, Governor, you remember, Governor, that when uh, in the final months of President Bush's administration, the U.S. economy was losing six, seven, eight hundred thousand jobs a month. And what you should have in, a, in the recovering phase of, of an economy, as we are supposedly in now, is the mirror image of that. We should be creating six to eight hundred thousand jobs a month. And he's not. But when, when the U.S. was losing all those jobs, we, was President Bush un-American? Did he not know anything about the, the free market system? What was going on? I think what happened to President Bush is that the, the explosion of purchases of homes by people who couldn't afford them created a crisis. But that doesn't excuse you from not putting policies in that create jobs. That doesn't excuse you from demon. You're not allowed to demonize the entrepreneurs of America. You shouldn't be demonizing the successful people of America. You shouldn't be condemning those who have been successful with a sneer every time you say rich. That's what this president well, is doing. Let me get, let me get. He's scaring investment. Well, on that there same is. conference call, Governor, there was a, a businessman, a supporter of Mitt Romney, who flatly said this president was uh, somewhat engaging in socialism. Is that what you're saying as well? Well, that's what this president has done. He's created a feeling amongst entrepreneurs that he's not a capitalist. And, and so I can't, I can't speak for every business person out there in which that feeling has been engendered, but the president should be aware of the fact that small business people, listen to what the NFIB said about this president, small people, uh, small business people think this president has absolutely no idea what to do to, to create an environment for them to start hiring. But are you saying he's, he's a socialist? I didn't say he was a socialist. All right. All right. I just was wondering because we, we did no, hear no. that from that. I, I just asked if you were among those who thinks no. he is a socialist. Uh, but I'm saying no. But what I'm telling you is he ought to be worried that he's making small business people feel that way. Well, let me ask you this question, because I, I asked it earlier and I keep asking this question. If this president is so anti-business, as so many Republicans now right. allege, why has Wall Street done so great 
over the past three years, going from, what, 6,500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, to almost 13,000 right now. And these huge companies are sitting on hundreds of billions, if not trillions, of dollars uh, in, in assets. Let's take the last point you made. They're sitting on trillions of dollars in assets. You know what they're waiting for? They're waiting to see who wins this election. If, Ob if President Obama is reelected, that investment money leaves the country. If, if Mitt Romney is, re is elected, that investment money is used to buy equipment here and to do hiring. You're exactly right. They're sitting on trillions of dollars because they're scared to death that this president might get reelected. But you agree that they've made a ton of money over the past three years, record profits for a lot of these big business corporations. But they have not invested it to create jobs because they're scared stiff of the man in the White House. Yes, they've done well. They've worked hard. Uh, you're not going to denigrate the business community for, for dealing with the difficult environment of climate and, and of, of the climate situation on the economic side. They've done a good job. They've worked to, to bring themselves back. They've created more efficiencies in their factories. They have done what they should do, not with government's help not with leadership from the White House, but because they're good business people. And, and now we shouldn't condemn them for having done that and say that somehow the president deserves credit because these people brought themselves up by the bootstraps. Let, let, let me play one clip for you from a new uh, uh, ad that the president has just put out. I want to get your yeah. reaction to this. We're almost you out of time. Be but careful. Be I want, careful, I want, Wolf, because yeah. I will probably give you an extremely hot reaction. All right, well, I want you to listen to this, uh, and you can give me any reaction you want. This is a free country, obviously, Governor. You uh, and I have known each other for a long right, time. All right, right, so listen to this latest Obama campaign ad, then I'll ask a question. Makes you wonder if some years he paid any taxes at all. We don't know because Romney has released just one full year of his tax returns and won't release anything before 2010. You know what? I put out as much as we're going to put out. What is Mitt Romney hiding? All right, now, as you know, Governor, there are a lot of Republicans out there who say, you know what, Governor, go ahead and release these tax returns. We're talking about George Will, Bill Kristol, Haley right. Barber, the former chairman of the Republican Party, uh, Britt Hume on Fox News last night. Rick Perry, the governor of Texas, he said this on January 16th in one of the Republican presidential debates. Mitt, we need for you to release your income tax so the people of this country can see how you made your money. And, and I, think that's a, I think that's a fair thing. All right, so uh, go ahead. You can now say whatever you want. Uh, respond to First some of, of your all, fellow, fellow Republicans. Uh, yeah, if, if, if Governor Romney releases two years, they're going to play games saying he should have four. If he releases four, they're going to ask for 12. If he releases 12, he's going to ask for 20. And frankly, with the way they're playing games with just about everything, uh, Governor Romney is absolutely right that he ought not to give him uh, a couple of thousand pages to play games with. But let me talk about that ad. Because that ad, in my opinion, defines President Obama, and I think he says at the end, I'm President Obama and I agree and I support this message, right? Yes. Okay, so let's talk about that ad. That ad is trying to suggest that Mitt Romney didn't pay taxes. Mitt Romney is such a public figure, everyone knows that if he didn't pay taxes, the IRS would be all over him. So there is no way the Obama administration uh, uh, campaign and President Obama can't know that the IRS did not suggest that Mitt Romney didn't pay taxes, which means they know that what they're saying is not true, which, which draws me to only one conclusion. When they say that something that's not true, and the President of the United States put the words, I support this message at the end of it, knowing that what they say is not true, then the campaign is lying. And so people should understand that when they hear that ad, all they're hearing is a campaign that knows that there is no way that Mitt Romney could have done what they're insin insinuating, and therefore they're not telling the truth, and the president's not telling the truth. Governor, uh, this conversation, no doubt, will continue. Uh, sorry we couldn't get you in front of a camera. We will do that the next time. Appreciate you joining us. I'm sorry the connection us. didn't work, but thanks for the chance to come on, Wolf. Really appreciate it, and frankly, I enjoyed it. 
All right, Governor, thanks so much. Uh, Governor, former Governor of New Hampshire, John Sununu, uh, explaining what he said earlier in the day. Uh, this conversation, by the way, this, this commotion over this is obviously not going to go away. We'll have much more coming up in our new 6 p.m. Eastern hour as well. Meanwhile, other stories we're following. Needles, yes, needles found hidden inside airline sandwiches. We have new details into the investigation. And a major change is brewing in the world's most isolated country. Stand by.